Welcome to the Rack and Review, a comprehensive look into propeller heads, reason, devices, and refills. One of Reason's biggest criticisms from those with a misunderstanding of what they're hearing is that Reason has a sound or coloration to it compared to other DAW. While I and many others disagree with that exact analysis, I do agree that Reason and many other DAWs do have a certain sound compared to many finalized productions. This being stock sounds tend to be extremely clean and superiorly recorded. This is something that we tend to not be used to as listeners or producers, and thus we need something to degrade the sound to taste. So today, we're taking a look at Blamsoft's resampler device, a bit crusher when brashly analyzed, and a subtle analog emulator when carefully explored. While simple in design and use, it's an integral part of my personal collection and a key in differentiating my production from others. The device itself does not have any latency, as it does create a bit of bit crushing. Testing generally reports latency ranging from two samples to 16 at the highest rate and depth on various algorithms, but it cannot properly be calculated due to the alteration of sound. The device itself can be stress tested to 75 in a chain on my i7 quad core Mac mini 2011 or high end computer and up to 51 on my MacBook Pro, which benchmarks at the system requirements. This is definitely not bad for any RE, but let's get to the actual review. Here we can take a look at the rating system. As for myself, I normally decide the value of a device using only a few points. Here it's been expanded and will be used as a star system from one to five. We will be evaluating based on functionality, workflow, uniqueness, aesthetics, and price value. The device is elementary at first look, but hosts a number of options in regards to customizing to the incoming signal. The down sampler section offers an algorithm selection varying between six classic and six modern settings. As the algorithm number increases, so does the sound quality as artificial high frequencies are prevented or removed due to anti-aliasing, and the algorithm itself performs more like a low pass filter. Classic algorithms use a low-pass filter followed by interpolation so commonly used it's been existent for centuries within mathematics. Modern algorithms use slightly impaired DSP algorithm found in real sample rate converters in order to perform as a crusher. The rate knob ranges from 441,000 Hz to 100 Hz. It's used to lower the sample rate with intentionally poor correction if the sample lies between the original and the downward conversion thus bit crushing the signal more. The quantizer section features six crunch and six scatter algorithms. The scrunch one and two algorithms are linear, while three through five are nonlinear, or compounding, and scrunch six is a floating point quantization. The scatter algorithm, like lossy compression, quantizes in the frequency domain. The depth knob ranges between 16 bits to 2.5, the knob itself controls the range of the amplitude level. Lower depths means lower quality. The upsampler section uses the same algorithms to bring the sample rate back up using the sparse samples to generate new samples at a higher rate. Like the downsampler, the upsampler uses poor estimation to further crushing. Each section features on and off switches, and there is a stage switch in the middle of the device to choose where the quantizer section is placed in the chain of the device either pre, mid, or post. There are also volume envelope and pitch envelope knobs for both down sampler and quantizer sections, allowing you to use either to modulate the respective large knob based on the incoming signal. Both controls have corresponding invert buttons in order to use negative values according to the volume and or pitch. The device even features CV inputs to modulate all of the major controls and CV out to use the incoming audio's volume and pitch to modulate with CV. The device is truly featured in design and usefulness in a small, lovely package. The flow of the device is set up simply and in the best way possible Dividing and labeling all of these sections to control clearly, this one rack unit has the most used features as large knobs lined up linear like the audio chain itself. 
For more dynamic, intricate controls, you have the volume and envelope knobs under each section, and when you think you may want to change the quantizer in the chain, it's a simple switch away conveniently placed in the middle. There is no waste of space and most settings can be made with very short amount of time, getting you through the process quickly. Even the rear of the device uses a smart workflow that doesn't have you placing unnecessary wire connections above each other if they do not correspond. I can't imagine how you can make the entire flow of the device any faster or more intuitive. The special thing about this device is what it does on both hard and subtle settings. Something that's not easily described with words, but clear through example. So let's take a look. Clearly, it does a nice job here creating a lo-fi version of a pre-existing track. Now let's take a look at what it can do on very light settings. Even with lower settings, the device adds a flavor of analog not easily adjustable with stock Reason devices. This tends to make the significant difference when applied through a track. This sound is unique, and something that truly adds to any device within reason. Something that is of true value to any user. The device, while simple and small, looks pretty. It really does resemble something you would find in a rack mount in anyone's studio. While fairly clean and concise on the front, as anyone would prefer, the device even holds up on the rear view, keeping everything in order on the right hand side and taking advantage of unused space with minimal but appealing voltage warnings, model numbers, and brand placement. I rarely can't see a detriment when it comes to the look, and I'm glad to report how much I enjoy it. Resampler is unique in that there isn't much need for a hardware bit crusher or downsampler, but there are still hardware counterparts out there. They are mostly available as guitar pedals and come at a pretty hefty price tag. There's the one knob dedicated to bit crushing with Elisis's Bertman, found for $175. The popular WMD Geiger counter with two controllable parameters for bit crushing, found for as low as $250 and the OTO Machines Biscuit is a dedicated 8-bit distortion unit for $595. All of these come with built-in effects and filters, but generally, like all hardware, 
come with a rather high price tag. When it comes to plugins, your options are bigger. The most renowned plugins that come much closer to Resampler are such as the Decimort for $49. This plugin also includes a built in filter and is controlled per channel. It, in particular, has the closest feature set to Resampler. There's also the Sonatex STX 1260, a variable lo fi workstation that offers controls for bit crushing and other downsampling styles for $75. There's even a free plugin called Decimate that does up to 16 bit distortion. We do have a modest digital distortion and bit crusher and screen, but its controls are not well specified and subtle is not really an option within the device. All of this shows us there's some options, but to really look at the device that comes closest to feature wise would be Decimort. And even it misses the same thing every other device or plugin misses the ability to interchange algorithms in the signal chain. Almost every other plugin still misses the ability to use higher bit rates than eight to control the sample rate. So we get a few more features at a low price of $25, a price veritably lower and for any plugin, not to mention a rack extension. Honestly, I can't imagine complaining about what is available for us at such a low price and how simply it does versatile deconstruction of sound with much more control than what's available in Reason and other plugins with more options and envelope automation built in. So yeah, in submission, this device, while simple, small, and easily overlooked, can become an essential tool, helping you add flavor and harmonics to your sounds with very little struggle and keeping you moving quickly through your composition. I give it a hearty recommendation and a perfect score of five stars. If you haven't picked it up or even given it a look, I suggest it highly. It's useful on synths, drums, bass, guitar, master chains, and even an entire piece to degrade, chop, and reuse. It's an essential tool I'm happy to own and suggest you look into for your own pieces. With that, I leave you once again with links to the shop page in the description. Please like the video if you found it in any way helpful and subscribe to be kept up to date with other upcoming projects, reviews, and tutorials here. Leave a comment if you have any suggestions and please follow me on Facebook and my personal YouTube channel for exclusive content and be kept up to date with upcoming videos and more. I will be attempting to do videos every other Friday and I'm working on a series of tutorials along with other projects. I can't specify them. But once again, this is Fretless Fingers with the Rackin' Review. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.